I need all the wins, yeah. Pay no L's, I gotta get a no call to quit, yeah. Gotta keep on moving no matter how hard it gets, yeah. Better move out the way, cause I'm coming with harder hits. My head is as hard as a brick, but I'm harder than all it is. You better move, you might get knocked out. Success ain't no giving, some days I don't hit, I don't sleep When I'm focused on dying, just down Wonder when I'm anxious, ain't no limit till I tank I'm running on fumes, the opposition don't amaze The roads whistle through the pavement, get your hands out of my bag I know that's because I've been in it, I don't need to brag I guess that's what happens when you taking care of your business What's a friend of you do the math? I'm out of my pocket, Houston, we got a problem I ain't perfect, let them watch me Elevating, got them nuts, cause I'm the pilot in the cockpit No, diving ain't the option, Woo. Watch out, get it here, watch out, get it here, watch out, get it here Woo. Welcome to DFS by the Numbers with your host Brady. Better move, you might get knocked out. Better move, you might get knocked out. move, you might get knocked out. What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers and welcome to Best Bet for UFC Vegas 88. And yeah, we have a fun card. I'm looking forward to this card. Um it should be fun. I think there's going to be a lot of violence. I think there's going to be a lot of finishes here. Looking forward to breaking it down, giving my 10 best bets. As you guys can see, I'm doing a solo best bet show. Everybody was busy today. Everybody's got stuff going on. So I um, just decided to do it solo. I wanted to you know, not skip the show. So, so here I am, and we'll definitely talk some bets here. Uh, before you start, if you guys could please do me a favor, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, go live every Saturday, two hours prior to the prelims. The prelims, I think, are starting around like 4 Eastern time. So, um, yeah, looking forward to it. Let's hit up the chat, see what you guys are saying. Um, And we got Dixon, first one in the chat. Brady, what is for lunch today? Hopefully the bookies. Hopefully we have the bookies for lunch and, and take their take their money. We got MMA Goulash saying someone better have a shoe ready. Yeah, let's get those shoes ready. I heard it's Tai Voss's birthday. So hopefully he's able to, to get a win on his birthday. We got Ryan in the building. We got Al or Jonathan. It's a weird comment. Uh, group hugging. That's a we really weird comment, Jonathan. But thank you for hanging out. I'm ready for some fights. Uh, I'm definitely ready for some fights. Steven saying hit the like. I agree. We got Ron in the building. We got Dennis in the building. Sorry for scaring you, Zester. Uh, we got Oh Snap. It's Mikey. What's up, boys? Let's cash some tickets. Like some morning pancakes or flapjacks. Shout out to Weezy. Shout out to Weezy and Deedee's in Florida enjoying the the warm weather down there we got elder in the building we got sean as well what is up sean uh, rem dog saying nothing better than listening to some best bets while running errands on a saturday morning yes sir ben in the building as well we got jay we got low we got 138 mma who i think will be on either i think maybe next week or the week after uh we got elder and we got scarface saying so just won a great night of fights and hit tickets that's always the goal it's always the goal all right I say we get right into it, guys. We're going to start with the first fight of the night. As always, going to be giving 10 best bets for the show. There are 13 fights, so I'm going to be passing on, on three fights. And the first fight of the card, we got Charlampas, Gregorio going against Chad and Helliger. And yeah, I'm going to use my first pass here. Um, just nothing really sticking out. Uh, and Hellinger was like plus 185 at one point, plus 175. Money has came in on him throughout the week. It's just... You know, I'm not overly impressed with Gregorio, but at the same time, I don't really want to lay money on Chad and Helliger because I've never been a Chad and Helliger guy, right? He's he's 37 years old at Bantamweight. I'm um, just never been high on the guy, but I would I'm also not high on laying minus 170 on Gregorio. So if anything, it's a dogger pass, but you know, didn't quite get there. And then nothing's really sticking out from a prop perspective as well. I could see this fight maybe finishing. I could also see it going the distance. So it's just a fight I, I kind of want to stay away from. Um, but yeah, the pick is actually in Helliger. It's just, I don't really want to lay money on the guy, to be honest. So I'm going to be sitting back and watching this first fight of the night. Not a, a ton sticking out. We got Forrest in the building. What is up, Forrest? Um, oh, I got, I got you. I got you, Jonathan. But still, I mean, it's still a weird comment, right? I mean, I don't know. We got uh, Damari with the 499. I appreciate you saying, appreciate you keeping the show going. This is the best show in sports betting. Appreciate the comment. Yeah, I, I didn't want to skip today. You know, I know it's not the the best car. You know, a lot of people aren't looking forward to it, but I'm looking forward to it. So I came on and wanted to absolutely do the show today. 
Exactly. I mean, I'll take this card. I mean, if you got if people are saying this card sucks, you're gonna hate next week. Like I've heard people say, like this is the worst card of the year. Wait till next week. Like next week is twenty times worse than this week. So yeah, uh, this week I actually think is good, but yeah, next week is is absolutely rough. Uh, what is up, Brady? What is up, Jack? Jason saying almost fight time. Yes, indeed. Gregorio way bigger. Yeah, decent size bigger. Made it beer and shoe. There you go. I will not be drinking any beers out of shoes tonight, but hopefully Shoei Vasa does um, one after a, a big first round knockout win. Uh, yes, sir. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. We got a uh, cash in the building. First time betting UFC outside of props. Gambling just went legal in North Carolina. They'd love to hear it. That's awesome. Glad uh, gambling is now legal in, in North Carolina. Uh, you're right. Just excited. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm excited too, Jonathan. I'm excited too, for sure. In no way, Weezy is in Florida. I live in Miami. Can't imagine walking into a random dive bar and seeing Uncle Weezy. I'm not sure if he's in Miami. I think he might be close to Miami. I, I forget where he's at. Maybe like the around like the Fort Myers area. Not 100 sure, but yeah, maybe you, you maybe you run into Weezy. You never know. <laughs> that'd be that'd be incredible. Feel like we are sacrificing a lot for UFC 300. Yeah, I agree. I mean, UFC 300 is uh, as, as stacked as you can get. UFC 299 was as stacked as you can get. Cannot wait for UFC 300. All right. So, yeah, I'm passing on the first fight of the card. Uh, nothing wrong with that. I have two passes left. So, passing on the Gregorio fight. All right. Moving on, we have Tiago Moises going against Mitch Ramirez. And we have some interesting line movement here. So, Tiago Moises got as low as minus 550. And he's currently minus 325. Rich Ramirez got as high as plus 400. He's currently plus 250. There's been some late action on the, the Mitch Ramirez side. So for me, um, I feel like there's a couple different ways you can attack this. I think the, you know, Tiago Moises sub one, sub two are definitely in play. But I think my best bet for this fight is going to be the uh, the under two and a half rounds. It's only minus 155, which I think is, you know, a pretty solid price considering you take a look at Mitch Ramirez. Not only is he coming in here on, on very short notice, but you know, Mitch Ramirez is a guy that typically his fights do finish under one and a half rounds, let alone two and a half rounds. Uh, Mitch Ramirez has only been over the one and a half round mark only once. So, you know, I think we do get a finish here. I do think we get an early finish here. I think if Ramirez wins, it's probably him starching Moises. We've seen Mo Moises starch before, um, but I am more so of the opinion that Moises is eventually get this fight down to the mat. And when he does, I just think there's going to be a massive levels difference on the mat. Um, and I think Moises does get that sub. But yeah, the under two and a half at minus 155, I don't think is terrible at all. I like that spot. And then you also take a look at, you know, who, who Moises is losing to. It's like really good guys. You know, listen to his five, six losses here. Benoit St. Denis, and we got knocked out by Pori, but very good. Uh, you know, Joel Alvarez is very good. Islam Mahachev, obviously. Demiris Magulov used to be very, very good. I don't know what's going on him with now and nowadays. And then Benil Dariush is also very good. So he's losing to very, very good fighters. I just don't think Mitch Ramirez, you know, kind of fits that bill. So this should be a levels fight. This should be a Moises fight. But people are taking some uh, Mitch Ramirez here. And he's now only plus 250. So we'll see what happens there. But you give me the under. I think it covers both sides. Sweatiest card in a while tonight. Yeah, I think from like a pick perspective, it is kind of sweaty. Like a lot of these, you know, matchups are, are very sketchy. A lot of fights that are very close can go either way. So, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Why would Ty fight on his birthday? Trying to get that birthday win. You know, fighting on your birthday is always plus EV. You know, the last person that fought on their birthday that I can remember, I think it was Lerone Murphy, went out there and, and beat Josh Kulabau in dominant fashion. So, yeah, fighting on your birthday typically works out more often than not. The main event will be great. It should be great. It should be great. Uh, who are we max betting today? I was actually, it would have been Mike Davis, but the line got completely blown out. I was actually thinking about maybe even maxing, max betting Mike Davis when he was like, what was he, like minus 250 around there? Uh, I would have, but the only concern I have with Mike Davis is just the extreme inactivities coming off of a layout. But I think Mike Davis does beat Natan Levy. But everybody thinks that this line's gotten um, out of hand at this point. He's like minus 500 now. Moises should do rather easy. Mitch does have a KO chance. Yeah, I think if you like Mitch, um, the KO one is plus 1,800, I saw. I think that's kind of how he wins. Tuivasa, first-round knockout. Tibera isn't good. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Ty, Ty Tuivasa, first-round knockout as well. Can't wait for UFC 400. I, 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 same, same. I uh, love the under. Yeah, I like the under. 
I don't think it's a crazy, crazy price here at minus 155. Moises is going to lose. Mark my words. Well, bet Mitch Ramirez. He's pretty big plus money there. Moises under 36 and a half significant strikes. Agreed. This Mitch movement is scaring me. Yeah, people liking themselves to Mitch Ramirez. But in a serious note, is it weird? My most confident pick is Chase on this week. Women's MMA is never my go besides the overs. Um, Kind of weird, but no, I agree. I think she should go out there and win. And I'll definitely be giving a best bet on Macy Chase on Believe It or Not. And I agree. I like this card a lot. Uh, how fast does Ty have to get the KO within two? Yeah, I say one and a half, two rounds. 80% of the money line vets are on Ty, and it's a pick em of what could go wrong. Yeah, money's been coming in on Tabora throughout the week. All right. Um, so let's move on to the next fight. I'm going to write this down. Uh, the Moises under 2.5 at minus 155. All right, so next we got Corey McKenna going against Jacqueline and Marim. And yeah, so this more very interesting line movement here because I remember looking at this fight last week. I do my graphics um, a week and a week and a half prior, and McKenna was a dog. She was like plus 110, plus 120. By the time I got around to looking at it, she was like minus 120, minus 130. And now she's like minus 170, which, you know, I wouldn't, really want to lay minus 170 on Corey McKenna. If you got her at plus money, I think that's that's solid. But still, I I, kill, I still feel like this is kind of like a, a coin flippy type fight where, you know, Ameline's going to absolutely have the, the BGJ advantage here. But the cardio and, and wrestling should be in favor of McKenna. You know, as, when this fight gets extended, it should favor her as well. I think McKenna can get some top time down the stretch. But, yeah, it's not a, a fight I'm, I'm very confident in. You know, the pick is going to be McKenna. But in terms of a best bet, uh, there's no way I'm giving out McKenna money line at minus 170. Um, if actually, you know what? There's a spot I don't actually hate, and it's going to be. I think the fight goes to decision is is kind of interesting. I know Amareem has finished the majority. Th she's finished every fight, right? But you know, Corey McKenna's never been finished. I don't think Corey McKenna is getting a finish. I'm completely ruling that out. I think this fight goes the distance. It's a it's a, it's a strawweight fight. Um, McKenna, we've seen really good submission defense out of her. She's fought good grapplers like Kay Hansen, like Vanessa Demopoulos. I like what I see from her on the mat. So I kind of like the fight goes to distance. And it's not a, a crazy price at all, considering, again, this is a, a strawweight fight. So let me see. So the fight goes the distance is minus one, minus 165, minus 160. I'll take that. I'll take the fight goes the distance at, at minus 160 here. Um, lean McKenna decision, but it could be close. Like it could be a close fight. I think Amarim's going to have her moments. I also don't mind this fight from like a live bet perspective because I have a really strong feeling Amarim probably wins the first round. So maybe Corey McKenna live. If you don't like her at minus 170, honestly, you might get like a plus number going into round two. So that's how I might attack. But yeah, fight goes the distance. I don't think is the worst look in the world. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I always like uh, responding to to all, all questions. Sometimes I, I can't pull them all up because I don't want to get kicked off of YouTube, but the ones that I'm able to pull up, I always like pulling up. Really hope McKenna wins for my seven-leg parlay. You have a seven-leg parlay on this card. Best of luck, man. Uh, it's going to be gonna be tough for the parlays, you got to think, on this card, but the prices are probably crazy. McKenna is honestly just so mid. I get that she's 24 and has a lot of potential, but right now at the moment, uh, Jacqueline should be able to dominate on the floor and even on the feet. Yeah, I don't think anybody's dominating on the feet, but yeah, on the mat, Jacqueline Amarim is, is no joke. True. That is true. That is true. Amarim finish only. Yes. Uh, if you want the finish only, that's fine. I think it pushes. Uh, it's, it's actually only minus 200. Like I expect it to be like something crazy because it's just it's hard to imagine Corey McKenna finishing anybody ever. So yeah, uh, Jack and Marine finish only minus 200. It's not, not bad at all. I bet McKenna plus 100 and Amarine plus 150. I either win with Amarine or break even. That's how you do it. You know, free, free money potentially. We'll see. Uh, let's see here. Which fights are you most confident? Don't go the distance. Most confident. The Filio Osborne fight, and obviously the main event, and then probably the Kennedy fight. I think those three. 
I'd be surprised if any of those three did go the full 15 or 25. Brady, what's your topology profile name? Um, I would think it's just DFS by the numbers. What's the most legs you would parlay? Zero. I mean, I have I have no parlays on this card. Tracked at least. Um, maybe two or three. Danny Silva's a live dog. He will win. Yeah, Wayne's a little bit concerning, but I think I think he's live. I'm hoping for battle cool about and in Hellinger overs. I like the. I don't hate the battle over and the and Hellinger over. I don't really like the the cool about over though. I think that's going to be an, an absolute war. Bam Bam and Kennedy Parlay thank me later. I, mean, I don't know about that. Um, Who wins, Battle or Lucid? We'll talk about it soon. All right. So let me put this in. I have the McKenna. Fight goes the distance at, what is it again? Minus 155. Minus 155. Okay. Moving on, we have a very fun fight here. We got Joshua Kulabau going against Danny Silva. And yeah, I mean, the weigh-ins were very concerning for Danny Silva. Um, I think he was the, the biggest weight miss out of the three weight missers. He didn't look that great. And one play I had circled all week was actually the, the fight doesn't go decision, violence here. And after the weigh-ins, I, I kind of like it even more because it's a, it's a Danny Silva fight. And Danny Silva is just a guy that he brings violence. He marches forward the entire time like a zombie. He has no regard to his own safety. He's very hittable, leaves a lot of openings. He dishes out a lot of volume in his own right. His opponent on the contender series landed almost 200 significant strikes against the guy. And, you know, Joshua Kulabau, he is low volume. But when he does land, Joshua Kulabau hits very, very hard. He has an opportunistic submission game as well. So I just feel like this is going to be just an absolute car crash. And I think somebody is probably getting served here. Um, so, yeah, I like the fight doesn't go. And it's plus money as well. Just with the way I see the fight playing out, you know, a plus money fight doesn't go is uh, is very intriguing to me. So I'm going to I'm going to give that. I'm just going to go fight doesn't go to decision. It looks like best price I see actually is plus 125. For that fight doesn't go to decision. I think we get violence. The lean is is Danny Silva, but after the weigh-ins, I don't want anything to do with his money line, to be honest. I mean, the weigh-ins were, were kind of concerning, but I could see a scenario where you know Silva overwhelms Kulabau, maybe gets them out of there late. Um, I could see a scenario if it does go the distance, you know, Silva being the having the higher output potentially, but the weigh-ins kind of spooked me off the uh, Danny Silva side. But yeah, give me violence here. The fight doesn't go to decision at plus 125 for a fight that I think is going to be potential fight of the night here, honestly. I think it's solid. Do you have any submission bets? Yeah, I have a couple. I have a couple submission bets. I think there's submission opportunities in a couple of these fights. Obviously, the you know, Tiago Moyes, this is live for a sub. Even Jack Lamarim is live for a first round sub. Kulabal, he's a, a black belt, I believe. Filio's live for a sub. Um, Mirshar, obviously. Uh, I think Kennedy's sneaky live for a sub and then battle as well. And then Tai Tui Voss is not submitting anybody. Um, uh, I don't even know what this means, man. You must be half broke or don't make much each UFC event betting on a bunch of one fighters, LMAO. Or do you drop a few thousand? I don't know what the hell you're talking about, dude. That's that's a pretty dumb comment. Uh, please clarify. Um, let's see here. My model has Lusa plus 11.08. So I bet him at plus 145, I think. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, did all your guests bail? Should have hit me up, brother. Next time, let me know. And I will try to jump on. Yeah, I had a couple guests. Um bail like last sec it's no big deal it happens you know people got got things going on but yeah appreciate that 130 I'll, I'll get you on either maybe maybe atlantic city or I'll, I'll hit you up but it's all good i'm not uh i mean i just don't know what the hell you're i mean i ask i mean it's it's um probably one of the most ridiculous comments i've ever seen i mean is, is it i don't know let's see how, how should i bet the josie and nunez fight you shouldn't you should. That's how you should bet it. You shouldn't. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I took a little bit of Spanish. Um, 
I know a, a tad tad French, but um, yeah, English is my is my number one language there, number one language. But I mean, I'm I'm down to to answer any questions. But I mean, let's uh, let's let's clarify. Let's let's clarify. I mean, I just don't know how to answer that. He's basically saying, how do you make money without betting parlays? And the root is, well, I don't, I don't like parlays. I mean, all my bets are tracked. Um, you can go to bet MMA tips and look at my tracked bets. I'm up over a hundred units. I'm actually decent at parlays, but they've kind of, they, they hurt me like last year a ton. So I'm kind of stay away from them. Uh, mostly props for me. Like you can look at my bet MMA tips and you'll see that props is my, is my best. Yeah. I mean, he seems ex extremely slow, which is fine. I mean, people are, people are, are very slow. It's, it's fine. It, it, it is what it is. We got Big Xander. Brady, if you could be in a triangle choke by any lady on the roster, who would it be and why <laughs> did, you, did you pick Liang Na? Um, gosh. I don't want to be in a triangle choke against Liang Na. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, this is another question. Like, I don't know how to answer this question, man. I don't know how to answer this question, but... Yeah, I guess Liang Na. She'd have to finish it in the first couple minutes or she's going to gas out. But yeah, I, I guess Liang Na. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's obviously it, it's it's you're able to profit by by betting props. You are like it's it's very it's it's very possible. Um, I'm a big fan of Liang Na. Big fan of Liang Na. Yeah, I mean, just just parlay everything, and you'll make millions of dollars, guys. Parlays are are the way to go, that's for sure. Filio Kennedy to Ivasa fight is a good decision. Parlayed on Hard Rock is minus one ten. Um, a three leg parlay at Chalk, I don't know. So I think it hits though. <laughs> Dern, people are saying Dern. I don't know. Let's see, Verna can step on you, Verna Jandaroba. Oh. Uh, Brady, how do you deal with? I mean, you got to deal with. I mean, there's some, <laughs> there's a lot of trolls out there. Um, like for example, I, I do these these shorts, these reels, and I did four of them for two ninety nine. I got Sean O'Malley decision correct, and I got Jack Della KO. I said KO two is KO three. Zero comments after those fights, but on the two that I got wrong, which was Poirier Benoit Saint Denis, my, my my shorts were like blowing up. Oh, you suck! You got it wrong. You just got to deal with it, man. People are are terrible, and uh, parlays are pretty cool. Yeah, your your parlay patent, you know they they are cool. Um, let's see, Baby Shark gets Tabitha Ricci can can potentially choke you. What's wrong with you, guy? Angela Hill, gosh, gosh. Uh, Brady, how do you like dad life? Does it mess with your betting life? No. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is waking up at 6.30 in the morning. I'm not a, a morning person at all. I'm a night owl, but now I guess I'm a, a morning person. All right. Um, let's move on to the next fight. We have Ode Osborne going against Jafel Filio Lane in the chat. Let me know what you have on, on this fight. But I am going to... Let me see here. I'm actually going to... No, uh, there is something I do like. So uh, what I do like here is is Filio late sub prop. So on FanDuel Sportsbook, they have the 2-3 uh, the submission combo. And it's plus 480. And that's kind of how I see the fight playing out. I think Ode Osborne early on might have some success. Um, you know, potentially hurting Filio on the feet, maybe knocking him out. But... As this fight goes on, we've just seen it time and time again. Ode Osborne crumbles more and more as the fight goes on. Filio has finished the majority of his wins by submission. Uh, we've just seen Filio tapped out. He's been tapped out. or we've seen, we've seen Osborne tapped out. He's been tapped out a couple times in the UFC. So, yeah, I like that Filio uh, sub two, sub three, a plus 480. That's kind of how I see the fight playing out. Um, Let's see here. If you bet... Less than one hundred dollars on a fight, you're weird. Good God, good God, Lane. Uh, Tracy Cortez, Basie Barber. What is the most massive parlay odds you've hit? Um, I don't know. I don't really do many parlays, but I, I hit some some big props. I hit Zell Huber sub two. I've hit Nate Landwehr sub two. 
Joe Pfeiffer, sub two, a lot of sub twos, um, hit some round three props. That's where I make most of my money is the, the, the long shot props nowadays. Parlays, I don't know. I've hit a couple of decent sized parlays, probably like 12, plus 2200, something like that. Uh, maybe plus 3000. I don't know. I don't really do them. I had a big NFL parlay last year, though. It was like like 25 to win, like a thousand, something like that. So I don't know what the odds were. But yeah, parlays ain't, ain't really for me, guys. I'm sorry. Norma Dumont. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, you only bet on MMA? You know, I bet on NFL as well. I had a lot of success betting NFL last year, actually. Plus 49.69 was uh, the last week hit for me. There you go. Elise Reed. Oh, my goodness. I appreciate you, Joey Bag O'Donuts, with a $10 dono. Haters going to hate Brady. Most of us appreciate your work. Yeah, I mean, it's all it's all part of the game. I, I enjoy the hate. You got to learn to embrace the hate. If people want to hate, just, just let them. Brady's a sub two whisper. Yeah, I've hit a lot of sub twos. Pfeiffer, Landwehr, Zell Huber, off the top of my head. Maybe hit some uh, this week as well. Uh, throw a DFS lineup at you. I can't do that or I'll get in trouble. <laughs> so I can't give you a lineup. But, you know, from a, a DraftKings perspective, I think that uh, Mike Davis at 9,200 is a very good look. I think that, um, you know, Isaac Dalgarian is a very good look at 8,500. I think he has potential, you know, serious upside. Um, I like Jafel Filio, 8,700 as well. But yeah, so those are some of my my favorite spots. Yeah, I like Mike Davis quite a bit. Um, appreciate you, uh, Caesar. Appreciate you. All right, guys. A lot of Tracy Cortez comments. Um, surprised nobody picked uh, Josie and Nunez for the uh, the triangle choke. Nobody wants to get triangle choked by Josie and Nunez. I'm, I'm not sure why. Yeah, Kennedy sub two. Um, it still haunts me to this day against Devin Clark. I bet Kennedy round two, round three, which was good, but I had my finger hovered over the trigger all week on Kennedy sub two, sub three on bet three, six, five. They had them both at plus 10,000 was going to do like 0 0.15 units at plus two or plus 10,000 round two, and then 0 0.1 units for plus 10,000 round three. And Kennedy submitted Devin Clark in the second round. So that was super annoying. Um, yeah, some people just, uh, they don't understand, which is fine. Some people just don't understand. It is what it is, but all right, let me see if I got this written down here. So I'm taking Jafel Filio sub rounds two, three at plus 480 on FanDuel Sportsbook. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Lipsky. I like Lipsky. Battle late late sub is weirdly. <laughs> we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. Um. All right, man. Let's. Brady got me a uh, plus forty one hundred parlay. I'm hitting that tonight with another two fight goes to split decisions. Best of luck to you. All right, guys. Let's move on to the next fight. We got Josie and Nunez going against Chelsea Chandler. And I am going to be, for this show, I'm just going to pass on this fight. Uh, I think this fight's a coin flip. Like, I would, I struggle to see how anybody bets um, really either side here, even though I have a spot I kind of like. But, yeah, laying chalk on Josie and Dunez, I'm not, I'm not sure. You know, like, on the feet, I do favor her. Like, if she can keep this fight standing, I think she's going to have an advantage. But if Chelsea Chandler is able to get this fight down to the mat, it could be bad. Like, Chelsea Chandler is a very big bantamweight. She missed bantamweight. You know, she's a featherweight. Whereas Josie Ann Nunez, she's five foot two. She says she's five foot two on paper, but she's clearly lying because she's she's four feet eleven inches at best. Like that's best case scenario for Josie Ann Nunez. So she's lying about her height. She's very undersized for the division and in this matchup. Chandler is going to have like a big, big size advantage. And if a big Chelsea Chandler gets on top of you, like, you know, it could be some serious trouble early. But for the sake of the show, I get three passes. I'm using my second one here. And, um, yeah, this fight's a, a mess, but we'll see what happens. 
You got two bands on battle under three rounds. I could see it. I could see a lot of people think the fight's going the distance. Nunez, round two, round three, or Chandler by decision. Chandler, round three, sub, plus 3,300. That could be big plus. Yeah, I was looking at the, the Chandler round two, three props in general. They're pretty, they're pretty big plus money. I uh, like the breakdown video, the betting breakdown video. I've got like 14 bets on this card. Let's go. You have a decent amount of bets myself. A lot of uh, big prop sprinkles. Um, two fight money line parlay. You got to throw Mike Davis in there, even though you know the line's kind of gotten out of hand. I'd say Mike Davis and I wouldn't do Kennedy. Um, Mike Davis and oh, I guess it would have to be like Macy Chazon, which is completely terrifying. But I guess Davis Chazon, but I don't like any money line parlays to be honest. Mike Davis would be that one parlay piece I do like, even though it's the line's gotten smashed. So people are are agreeing with that. Everybody's parlaying Mike Davis, and that line has got a uh, torch throughout the week. Hit the like. I agree with Silky. I agree with Silky. Chandler's going to, to run out of the ring. She's going to try. She's going to try. Uh, Nunez is a man. She cannot choke me. I don't think she's a man. Come on. Come on. What about Celia? Celia? Philia? Who's Celia? I don't know. Chandler look has that way. It may be. Oh, that's that's ridiculous, Matt. That's ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. All right. Um, Silva. As a parlay piece? Or like a pick? I, I mean, I, I, I'm not touching the Silva side after the, the Williams, personally. Josie Ann and Beetlejuice? Josie Ann does not look like Beetlejuice. Let me see. That's messed up, man. No, Josie Ann does not look like Beetlejuice. No. Come on, Jeff. Come on. I can't invest in a 4.11. Yeah, 4.11 is putting it nicely. I think she's more like towards like 4.8. Uh, she may win, but I don't think she gets the finish. Yeah, my, my pick, my prediction is actually Josie Ann by decision. But ugh, I don't know. I can see this fight playing out many different ways. All right. Let's move on to the next fight. We have Mike Davis going against Natan Levy. We got Mike Davis, the uh, the second biggest favorite on the card now. And yeah, I like Mike Davis here. I like him quite a bit. Uh, I guess the the most concerning weigh-in yesterday was Natan Levy. Like, I'm not sure what was up with Natan Levy yesterday. It was it was very concerning. Natan Levy looked slower than OSP up there. You know, going you know weighing in. It had to be, I should have timed it. Like that had to be the the longest weigh-in ever for Natan Levy. Like it was like five to ten minutes of him just weighing in. He spent three minutes trying to take off his necklace. Um, I'm not sure what's what's up with Levy. He missed weight by half a pound. He he was not medically clear to continue to cut that half a pound. I think Levy had a very tough weight cut. And honestly, Levy has a very tough matchup ahead of him against Mike Davis. The only thing I, I don't like about Mike Davis is the inactivity, the layoffs, the uh, the injuries he's dealt with. But throw that out of the window. I mean, I just think he's the much better fighter. I think he's much better on the feet. I think he's much better on the ground. I don't think Davis has the best cardio, but he's going to have the better cardio here, in my opinion. So, yeah, this should be Mike Davis. I'm just not sure where Levy has success here, honestly. So, yeah, I like Davis, but you know, he's minus 500 now. What I don't mind is is Mike Davis inside the distance plus 150. Davis is a good finisher. Um, you know, 80% finish rate. He finished all of his wins up until I think that that Slava fight he went to decision and then also went to decision against Mason Jones. But, you know, Natan Levy, like he's never been finished, but he's also never fought anybody as good as Mike Davis. And I feel like Davis can do it in a bunch of different ways. I feel like Davis can destroy Levy on the feet. I feel like he could take him down and, and either pound him out or find the sub. It could be early, it could be late. So, you know, getting a minus five hundred favorite, you know, inside the distance plus one fifty. I don't, I don't hate that whatsoever. So, give me Davis to finish Levy. I don't know when. I don't want to mess around with the round props, but give me Davis to win inside the distance. I know Lane in the chat would would probably just lay lay one unit on on Davis at at minus five hundred to maybe win zero point twenty units. So, 
I know Lane likes that, but for me, just give me the inside the distance there. Uh, yeah, that is the question. I think he's either going to get the finish or it's going to be like a 30-26, 30-25 beatdown, like one of those fights. I just don't think Levy's going to have much success. Uh, I thought Battle looked awful at the weigh-ins. Um, he always looks terrible at this weight class. Yep, no-brainer. Mike Davis, easy win. Agreed. Agreed. Where is the plus 150 DraftKings Sportsbook? Uh, see, I don't want to miss anything here. Three most confident picks. It would be Mike Davis, um, Macy Chazon, and I guess you could throw uh, Moises in there, I guess. But, you know, Moises is not somebody. I guess Kennedy. Kennedy could be up there. Yeah, Kennedy. Give me Kennedy, Davis, and then uh, Chazon. Then Moises would be like number four. DK has Davis minus three and a half, minus 200. Not bad. That is not bad. I don't like that. Or I don't, I don't mind that. Bet365 has plus 135. Is it just you or uh, did Brian Battle look like a snack at Wayans? That was just you, Melon. Yeah, I lean late finish. I lean late finish, but it cooked him early, man. Like, I think it's just so much better than Levy. David said he's getting a finish. I got round two and round three after seeing Levy. I'm concerned about getting out of the first. Yeah, I'm leading two, three as well. Um... Brady, any chance UFC signs Lou Sassoli, a French fighter? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Lou Sassoli is a, a pretty solid prospect, and he might make it to the to the big leagues eventually. But well, I'll keep an eye out. I'll keep an eye out for Lou Sassoli. Yeah, I was looking at that too. I think yeah, they said minus 200. It's not bad because he's either going to beat the the brakes off of him, I think, or or get that finish. All right, let's see here. Uh, we'll move on to the next fight. Let me put this in. Mike Davis, inside the distance, plus 150. All right, let's do a quick recap of the prelims. There we go. So I'm passing on the Gregorio fight. I'm taking the Moises under 2.5, minus 155. I'm taking the McKenna fight goes the distance, minus 155. I'm taking the Kulabal fight doesn't go the distance, uh, plus 125. I'm taking the Jafel Filio to win by submission in rounds two or three, plus 480. And then I am taking Mike Davis inside the distance at plus 150. Uh, let's see here. Davis inside the distance, plus Moises inside the distance, plus GM3 sub, plus Filio by sub, plus Kennedy KO, plus 9,150. I think all those are on the table. All those are certainly on the table. All right, but I believe those were the prelims there. So I think the main card opener is going to be GM3 going against Brian Barbarena. And yeah, it's weird seeing a Gerald Mearshart as a, a favorite in the UFC in general, but you know, especially at minus 235. But it's also weird seeing Brian Barbarena at middleweight. Brian Barbarena should not be fighting at middleweight. I think he's very undersized for the division, and he's undersized in this matchup as well. And Brian Barbarena has a huge hole in his game, and that's the, the takedown defense. So although Mearshart's not a great wrestler by at all, at all, um, I don't think he'll have really any problem taking down Brian Barbarena here. In terms of you know the Mearshart is chinny narrative, um, I mean, when he's getting knocked out, he's getting knocked out by Big giant hard hitters like like Joe Pfeiffer, Hamzat Shemaev, guys like that. Brian Barbarena, more of a more of a volume guy. Like Brian Barbarena only has four knockout wins in the UFC, and he's been fighting forever. So not entirely worried about Barbarena knocking him out. Um, so yeah, it's it's Mearshart for me. You know what I found interesting was uh, Mearshart inside the distance plus one hundred four. I think that's interesting because you look at Mearshart. This guy has I think like a ninety something percent finish rate, and then in the UFC specifically. Mearshart has never won a decision ever. He's never ever won a decision. He has eight or nine finish wins, zero decision wins in the UFC. So I think Mearshart is very alive for that finish. It's plus 104. Um, you could also take a look at like the, the late Mearshart uh, props are interesting as well. I think I saw round three at plus a thousand, which is crazy because that's how Mearshart wins a lot of his fights is in round three. But just give me the inside the distance plus 104. I think Mearshart gets it done. Um, 
Brady, I eat three Costco muffins last night. I can't stay off the toilet. Any tips? I've no, I've I've never had a, a Costco muffin, but I I guess the tip would be maybe stay away from those in the in the near future. Davis and the fight doesn't go decision on Osborne Harley. I like it. It's just going to come out to like minus one seventy is is the thing. But I I do like both those spots. Filio might lose outright. Yeah, I mean, Ode's dangerous early. That's why I don't mind that. Just the fight doesn't go decision instead. You know, I wasn't here for it, but what do you think about Cool About by Sub? I actually think it's very much on the table. Cool About Sub. Um, let's take a look. So Cool About by submission is... Uh, da -da -da. Cool About by Sub is like plus 850. I think that's on the I think that's on the table as well. Cool about by sub. But it could also be by knockout. But I believe he is a black belt. And his only finish win does come by sub for what it's worth. Tie round two, KO and battle sub three. I think both those are on the table. Barbarina looked uninterested, soft at weigh-ins, can't lay juice on GM three under two and a half. Looks solid. Yeah, it looks very solid. I think that's that's very generous uh, under two and a half there in a, in a Gerald Mearshart fight. I put my money on McKenna, and I feel like I'm baited into a one-sided domination by Amarim. She is so good on the ground, but that's it, I think. Uh, I mean, you could, you could hedge out at this point, right? Like, Amarim's a, a pretty big dog now. And then we got Darren Singletary in the building with uh, some type of emoji. It looks like maybe some eyeballs there. Never seen that one before, Darren. But yeah, shout to, shout to Darren Singletary. All right. Let's keep moving on. We have... Let's see here. We just talked about the the Gerald Mearshart fight. I'm going to write it down. Gerald Mearshart inside the distance, plus 104. All right. As we got Macy Chase on going against Panny Kanzad, and we do have some line mood on this one as well. Money's been pouring in on Chase on throughout the week. She was like minus 180 for a while. Now she's minus 238. Panny Kanzad is, is currently plus 203. I think it's a good matchup for macy chase on here um i think she can win a lot of minutes against the cage just using her size her strength and then it, i think she can also get this fight down to the mat as well i guess what i'm kind of struggling with is you know does macy get that sub you know in their first fight she did submit her um obviously that was a long time ago and and since then kianzad's went to decision in every single fight since then so the last time a kianzad fight has ended inside the distance was against chase on or does Chazon, you know, hold her against the cage, win minutes against the cage, drag her down to the mat and, and grind out a decision here? So, um, you know, a spot that I don't mind is they have the, the double chance that I don't mind on, on bet 365. And the double chance for Macy Chazon is minus 160 for the submission or decision. I don't think she's knocking out Kanzad. I think if she does finish her, it would be sub. But I think the the most likely scenario is that decision. But yeah, that sub decision double chance minus one sixty gets that that money line down quite a bit there for minus two forty minus two fifty on a lot of books. So that's when I go with here. I'm going with Chase on double chance sub or decision. And yeah, I don't. I actually saw that today. I don't. I don't hate that. Lady favorites nine and three. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. What do you think of battle by submission? Um, I mean, I'll, I'll be sure to talk about that for sure once we get to that fight. Um, Kanzad gets the upset here. I mean, maybe like we've seen crazier things happen, maybe, but I think Chazon will have to like really drop the ball to, to lose this fight. Uh oh, uh oh, we got Hot Boy is in the house. What is up, Hot Boy? Uh, Brady, you didn't talk about the Panny Macy fight in your betting breakdown. Just totally skipped past any reason. Yeah, I got up at six o'clock in the morning yesterday and I recorded that betting breakdown at like, like 12 or one at night and I was just exhausted and I didn't have the energy to, to spit out a Macy chase on breakdown at the time, but I slept in today till 10, I'm rejuvenated, I'm refreshed and I was able to just now give you know, somewhat of a solid breakdown, I think, on the Chase and fight. So, yeah, I skipped it. I'm not betting on this fight, but for the sake of the show, yeah, that sub decision, minus 160 is what I'm going with. I think Macy looks for the finish, wants to beat Panny more impressively than Ketlin did. 
yeah, that, that's kind of like why I like throwing that sub in there as well. Ooh, I like this though. A chase on and the money line and the over one and a half minus one twenty. I like that. I hope so, Darren. I hope so. Um, yep, like it. I like it. Um, sixty percent cans it on DK. Goodness, best of luck to you. I'm not. I'm. I'm not touching this fight on DK personally. I think it's going to be very low scoring, cage pushy type of fight. I really bet WMA, but I really like Chase on here. I think she bullies cans that I'm seeing it the same way. Uh, yeah, I think this one does. I did. I slept till ten, but I was up like late last night though. But yeah, I did sleep till ten. But I'm typically nowadays waking up at like six thirty. It's it's terrible. It's just terrible. All right. Moving on to the next fight. We have Christian Rodriguez going against Isaac Dolgarian. And yeah, this fight is like the talk of the town. People are very excited about this fight one way or another. Um, I think there's a couple of different ways this can play out. First of all, I think this is a fight where we're going to learn a lot about Isaac Dolgarian, right? There's a lot of assumptions one way or another about this guy. And I want to see, I want to see this, I want to see this fight. I want to see this fight potentially get to the second round, maybe the third round. Um, but yeah, Isaac Dolgarian, he looks like the real deal. Like if it turns out Isaac Dolgarian can go a, a hard 15 minutes, I mean, Christian Rodriguez is not beating this guy. Um, and a lot of people aren't beating this guy. I mean, Isaac Dolgarian, from what he's shown in the first, you know, couple minutes of first rounds, he's very good. And apparently he does have cardio from what a lot of people are saying. Um, he does a lot of running and whatnot. And then he's training in Colorado. He can go five rounds apparently, which is great. You know, that's that's the big narrative, but we just haven't seen it. We haven't even seen Isaac Dolgarian battle any adversity. We've never seen him. Um, I don't even think I've seen him get hit before. So I think we'll learn a lot about Isaac Dolgarian here. Uh, I think there's a couple spots sticking out, a couple different ways you can attack it. But for the sake of the show, I'm actually going to pass here because there are some other spots I do like in this um, upcoming co-main event in the battle fight, the Kennedy fight, and then the two of Asa fight. But yeah, it's an interesting fight. I see a lot of people making cases for both sides. What's interesting, this money line has just been blown out. Like Isaac Dolgarian was about to pick him for a while. Now he's minus 180. And um, I don't know, a lot to see. Christian Rodriguez has been going out there and just, you know, beating these prospects as of late. Cameron Simon, people were really excited about him. Rob Rose Jr., people were really excited about him. Isaac Dolgarian, I think people are very, very excited about Dolgarian. So we'll see if uh, Rodriguez can continue to to beat the, these prospects. And it'd be an incredible win for Rodriguez if he does. But yeah, this is my favorite fight on the card. And I cannot wait for this one. But for the sake of the show, I'm going to, I'm going to use my third and final pass because there are spots I like more in the last three fights. Um, what are the upsets on the card? Like we can look at, we can find a lot of upsets on this card. Um, I think, well, nobody's a, a dog in the uh, Tibera fight, but I think in Helliger could be live. You know, a lot of people think Mitch Ramirez is, is live. Amarim's definitely live. Danny Silva, I think is live. Odie Osborne's live. Chelsea Chandler's live. I don't think Levy's live. I don't really like Barbarina either. Um, Christian Rodriguez is live, and I don't really like OSB. I think there's potential for a lot of upsets here. I really do. Like, even the the fighters that I think are safe, like Kennedy, like, Kennedy's a guy. Like, you can't trust Kennedy at minus 700, but he should win. Mike Davis, I think, is probably the safest guy on the board. Chazon, I think, is somewhat safe, but we'll see. Tuivasa inside 60 seconds plus 1850. That's actually... Crazy odd. Like last week, it was the Spain inside 60 seconds. It was only like plus 350, something terrible. It hit, but that was crazy. Uh, I bet Rodriguez, Dolgarian is overvalued. I think he is overvalued. I'm still picking him to win despite the the, the massive line movement, Dolgarian. But yeah, I mean, there's um, Christian Rodriguez at plus 155. But at the same time, like after this fight's over, we could look back and say, Holy crap, Isaac Dolgarian was only minus 180 here. Like it could be one of those situations, is the thing. Uh, do you still like the fight, the Dolgarian fight not to go? I, yeah, I don't I don't mind that at all. I mean, this is a guy that if you add up his entire career, you barely get 12 and a half minutes for the under two and a half, and the fight doesn't go to be about a pick him. It doesn't make a ton of sense to me. But a lot of think this a lot of people think this fight does go the full 15. But we've never seen Dolgarian even go to the second, so. Uh, that's right, we didn't see him, so it's C-Rod for the win, maybe by sub. 
Rodriguez has been fighting pipsqueaks. Isaac is going to do him like a little white boy. Oh my gosh, Melon. Oh boy. How do you see Lusa winning? I think he's worse in any aspect of MMA than Battle. Um, I think he can wrestle Brian Battle. To get him down. I mean, Brian Battle's take on defense is non-existent, but we'll talk about that fight. I have something interesting to say about it. I think both guys are the real deal is the thing. If Isaac gets him down like Rose did, he's pounding him until the ref stops it. I'm seeing it this, the same way, honestly. And if he doesn't get it done in the first round and he takes him down again in the second, he probably pounds him out in the second. So we'll see. And yeah, it's a phenomenal matchup. Jason's saying, I'm, in, I'm invested in Kennedy, but I have a feeling about OSP. Those times when we totally write off fighters, um, it's often when they come back with something crazy. That's true. And I mean, it, sh it shouldn't shock anybody if Kennedy goes out there and loses, right? I mean, Kennedy's had some weird, weird moments in a lot of his fights. But I mean, if he loses the OSP, he should be ashamed of himself. All right. Moving on to that fight. We got Kennedy and Zachuku going against Ovens St. Prue. And yeah, Kennedy's minus 700. Um, what I'm going to throw out here is just going to be that uh, Kennedy and Zachuku, just to win in round two, plus 380. I'm hoping, you know, early on, it's like a feel out process. I'm hoping Kennedy comes in here a little bit slower in terms of, you know, starting a lot slower. Cause that's what he does. Like I was looking through Kennedy's record in the UFC. The dude has no first round finishes and you can kind of see why with the way this guy fights, it kind of turns it up as the fight goes on. Obviously, could he finish OSP in round one? Absolutely. If he, if he wants to, he can, but I have a feeling Kennedy might start a little bit slower because in his last fight against us and Jacoby, he did start really fast. And, and what happened then? He got clipped. He got knocked out. So I think the game plan here for Kennedy should be, you know, starting a little bit slower, you know, growing into the fight a little bit. And then, you know, starting to take over when OSP starts to slow down because OSP is going to be dangerous in those first five minutes. But, you know, that's that's probably about it. So, yeah, Kennedy, like Kennedy round one is it's terrible. Like Kennedy round one is plus 115 plus or minus 110 on looks like Bovada, I think. But Kennedy round two, you know, plus 380, that's that's kind of what I'm attacking here. So looking for a round two finish from Kennedy. I think he finishes OSP, hopefully in the second or third round, like he, like he typically does. But yeah, round two plus 380, I don't hate that. I don't want to mess around with, with like the knockout or sub because I think the sub's actually decently live here. Could see like a club and sub. Kennedy's been working on his grappling. Um, don't mind the submission prop, but yeah, give me Kennedy round two at plus 380. Let's see here. C Rod for the dub. My third leg says Amarim round one plus 500. Do I trust my mystic cock? Um, I think like it's on the table. Like she has all but one of her wins come in the first round. Yep, exactly. OSP looked like he was 94 years old at weigh-ins. Yeah, he pretty much is. Over 1.5, plus 130, ready for, ready to sweat. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I think um, it could potentially go over one and a half. But it it could also like end very quickly as well. It is going to be a sweat, Urban. OSP should be totally done, but OSP sub is paying out good. Yeah, could get that, that Vaughn flu. You know, you never know. Could get it. But uh, I, I doubt I doubt it. All right. So we'll move on to the co-main event. Let me write these down real quick. So um, so GM3, I have Jason. Uh, sub decision. Minus 160. I'm passing on the Dolgarian fight. That's my third and final pass. And then I'm taking Kennedy round two at plus 380. Uh, OSP might tap to the first strike. Guy is just here for a check. Yeah, it's looked like he's been here for a check like the last four years. So, yeah, maybe he does tap to, <laughs> tap to a strike. All right, co-main event. We got Brian Battle going against Angelusa. Yeah, so an interesting spot stuck out um and i was just actually going to say that uh, osp by von flu plus three thousand. there you go so i was looking at um battle late 
props in general, I think are interesting here, but battle sub two, sub three, I think is very interesting just with how I'm kind of seeing the fight play out. Cause I think that Ange Luce is very live here to win minutes with the wrestling, you know, Brian battle gets taken down by a gust of wind and Ange Luce is actually not a terrible wrestler at all. And uh, that's what he's been putting a huge emphasis on in his past camps. And, and probably this one specifically, like you're, you're going to want to take down Brian battle, right? So I can see Ange Luce going out there, getting quite a few takedowns. The problem with Ange Lusa that I have and why I can't get there from a money line perspective is the gas tank, the cardio. I mean, he slows down in, in every fight, which you can't really afford to slow down against a guy like Brian Battle, right? So um, the scenario I kind of am looking at is I could see, you know, Ange Lusa getting tired second, third round, shooting in on a takedown. And, and what is Brian Battle really good at? He's really good at snatching up that neck. Brian Battle's finished half his wins by sub. A lot of them coming 2-3, even in, in the tough house. Uh, Petrosky got subbed round two against the Brian Battle. So, yeah, I could see a battle sub here. I think is very live late, and that's what I'm going to give out here. Um, they have battle sub 2-3 combo on Fandua, plus 750, which I think that's very much on the table. If this fight does go the distance, I think it's going to be pretty close just because I feel like Lusa can win minutes with the wrestling on top. I think the striking's competitive, but yeah, the, the cardio is all in favor of battle. But yeah, two three sub plus seven fifty. I thought that was very very intriguing because I think if this fight does finish, I kind of think that's how it's happening because Ange Lusa has a brick for a head, and battle's tough as nails in his own right. So I think it would be sub. So yeah, that's what I have for this this coming event. That two three sub battle via gas tank. Could see it. Could see it. That's that's like the one thing holding me off of OS or of uh, of Ange Lusa is that gas tank. We got Tim with the 199. Appreciate you, Tim. He says, thanks for all the free analysis, man. Appreciate you. I appreciate you, Tim, for the dono and hanging out with me for some fights. Battle get-up game is lacking. Yeah, it's not good. Not good. This fight should be closer to a pick -up. Model has it loose at plus 111, so I bet him plus 130 or plus 160. I agree. A lot of people think battle's like the lock of the week. I'm not sure. Like, I think if battle does not get that finish late, like, this fight could be very close. Yeah, battle's huge, which that also could play a factor, right? Like battle being much bigger, having much better cardio. I think that's definitely a factor. Yeah, loose is not a finisher at all. Um, I think the last loose of finish came like like seven years, like a long time ago. Loose is not a finisher. Loose almost got KO by Reese McKee. I repeat <laughs> Reese McKee. Uh yeah, people hate on Reese, but Reese McKee's not not terrible. And by the way, Reese McKee is fighting soon. And I forget who he's fighting against, but that fight's going to be a banger coming up in the next couple weeks, I think. Battle by sub, by, battle inside the distance, plus 225. Battle improving every fight. Pooh Bear, now the Butcher, great fight name. I kind of liked Pooh Bear. I thought it was, you know, unique. Uh, Lusa has fought the welterweight goat, JDM, and went the distance with, with a guy who's built like Doc is going to do. Built like Gok is going to do. Battle round three decision plus 123 on Bet Rivers. You ever consider doing live shows like MMA Guru? Like, you mean like the live uh, fight companions or just like live streams in general? Maybe, maybe. I got battle. He lets me down. Effort. Lusa has a chin, but most likely gets tired and subbed in two three. I hope so. I mean, I could I could use a battle, battle sub two three. That's what makes me nervous. Battle is like, yeah, battle is huge for the division. I don't know how he gets down to this weight class, but he did, and he's going to be much, much bigger. Uh, yeah, woof, yeah, Cheedy and Jaquani versus Reese McKee. What a fight. What a fight. Yeah, Cheedy's cutting down to welterweight. I feel bad for Reese McKee. I mean, you don't want to be hittable against Cheedy and Jaquani. I mean, I, I don't know who sanctioned that fight, but... That's going to be a very violent fight in Atlantic City. That that Cheedy and Jaquani Reese McKee fight. Fight companion, maybe, maybe in the in the future. We'll see. And you're not wrong. And he and he gasses out quite a bit. Minus two eighteen. Yeah. He can't be too big of a favorite just because Cheedy's been kind of flaky in the UFC a little bit, but he I'll be looking at like Cheedy. Round one, like, Chidi sucks. I mean, like I said, he's been a little flaky, but 
you know, I think it's a good spot for him to maybe get a knockout. All right, guys, we are finally at the main event. Thank you all so much for watching, sticking with me on the solo best bet show. Next week, we'll be back with the full panel. I did a really terrible job this week in terms of I like to uh, set it up a couple of weeks ahead of time, give people chances like ahead of time. I uh, was not able to do that. Just uh, last week was was hectic for me. Uh, just a lot going on. So next week, we'll be back with the full panel, full panel for Atlantic City. And then a full panel for UFC 300. But hopefully you guys somewhat enjoyed the solo show. Got to re, um, got to interact a lot with the chat. Got to get in with it uh, with with my guy Lane. I'm I'm still you know not sure what he was asking earlier, but um, yeah, it's it's fun. It's always fun interacting with the chat. Appreciate you, Jason. Um, I thought I thought Cheedy was coming down, right? I could have swore I heard somebody say. I think Uncle Weezy was talking about it. I think. He said uh, he was coming down. I don't know. I think, it, yeah, it'd be more likely that Reese would go up. That's what I would think, but I could have swore I heard Wheezy talking about Chidi is coming down, so we'll see. Uh, yeah, Wheezy is not here. He's in Florida, probably on the golf course, um, enjoying the sun. That's where I would like to be, on the on the freaking golf course, enjoying the sun, but uh, maybe maybe next week. Uh, let's see. Let's go, Mike Davis. Let's go. Appreciate you, Professor. All right. Let's move on to the next fight. We got the main event, Tai Tuivasa going against Marcin Tybura. And I feel like there's two different ways to uh, to play this, right? If you like Tai Tuivasa, you like the, the KO1, KO2. And then you, if you like Marcin Tybura, you probably like the, the round two, round three maybe round four if it, if it even gets there, but I don't think it does. So I think somebody is getting finished here. For me, I'm kind of more so on the Tuivasa side. Money's been actually coming in on Tambora all week. Um, it's now a, a straight pick em. Tai Tuivasa was as low as minus 135, minus 125 for a while. Now it's a pick em, which makes sense. Like this is a, a pick em type fight. Um, I think it all comes down to whether or not Tuivasa is able to get Marcin Tibera out of there early. If he does, he does. If he doesn't, you know, that's what Tybura does. Tybura is one of those guys that just weathers a storm, um, doesn't really initiate grappling early, but just weathers a storm, and then and then he eventually takes you down in the second or third round, and then he maybe maybe finishes you. But, yeah, Tybura actually has a ton of decisions in the UFC. I think he only has, like, a handful of finishes. But, yeah, I mean, if he gets on top of Tuivasa, late round two, round three, round four, he, he probably is finishing them because Tai Tuivasa, when tired especially, kind of a fish on the wa fish out of water on his back. So, yeah, um, I'm on the Tuivasa side. It is Tai Tuivasa's birthday, and you can't be losing on, on your on your birthday, Tai Tuivasa. And then on top of that, you also cannot be losing to a guy in Tai Burra who showed up with one of the worst haircuts I've ever seen. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it. There's a glare, a little bit of a glare, but it's probably one of the worst haircuts I've ever seen. It looks like, you know, he's in the barber chair and like the barber like tilted him to the side in this chair like that and just did it like that. Or maybe his barber was, was blind or I don't know what happened, but I mean, that's a concern. As soon as I saw that, that haircut, I actually bet to Ivasa round one and round two knockout. Cause I mean, if you lose to a guy with a haircut like this, I mean, there's no recovering from that tied to Ivasa. So we'll see. It's his birthday. He's going against Tybura, who obviously isn't taking his career seriously. Like if you're not taking your hair style seriously, um, you're obviously not taking your career seriously. So Marcin Tybura, um, I think he gets finished here in the first round, maybe second. But if not, if he is able to extend this fight, he probably does finish to Ivasa late. Uh, so the the bet I'm going to be going with here is just going to be tied to Ivasa and the under round and the under one and a half rounds is plus one ninety five on Bet Rivers. I'm going with that. You know, tied to Ivasa has eight wins in the UFC. Seven of those eight wins come under one and a half rounds. If it goes over, I think he's probably you know screwed. So yeah, under one and a half and the tied to Ivasa money line plus one one ninety five is how I'm attacking it. Jason said, let's go Ty. Probably still easy work for Ty Burra. Going to have to weather a storm. And then it could look like uh, easy work. Yeah, I mean, it was... Um, 
I've seen some terrible haircuts, but that that one takes the cake. I'm surprised the UFC even let him uh, show up with something like that. Max bet Ty. So it's it's King's birthday and it's Ty's birthday. Happy birthday to you. If Ty does a shoey at the apex, he might have a problem. He'll try. I mean, if he he'll try to get a shoey. Um, I don't know about Max bet, but yeah, I mean, I think he should win. Yeah, the the prior to to this terrible haircut, the the, the worst one I could think of was that Venetia Salvador haircut. Like that was terrible, man. That was terrible. Looks like the villain from the fifth element. I got to look it up to, to see. I'm taking a shot for every Roadhouse commercial tonight. <laughs> Be careful, man. I mean, you, you take a lot of shots. Yeah, he does. It, the rule is basically if, if you are making bad decisions in the barber chair, you're probably going to make bad decisions in the cage as well. And Ty Tuiva, or uh, Marcin Tybura made a very... A very poor decision in the barber chair. I mean, like, what do you even say to to get something like this? What do you even what do you even say to get something like that to the barber? Like, I don't know. Maybe you know what I think might have happened. He is, I believe, Polish. Maybe there was like a language barrier. Maybe you got a, a haircut in Vegas, and maybe there's like a language barrier. I don't know, but that's the only thing I could think of. Uh, it's, it's, it's so, so like some fights, like he's been starched plenty of times. Augustus Akai starched him. Uh, Tom Aspinall starched him. Uh, Shamil Abdurakim have knocked him out. So he's been knocked out quite a few times, but he's also been able to take big shots and hang in there with guys like Greg Hardy recently. And then, um, guys like Walt Harris, big hitters as well. So I'd say it's so, so it's, it's not terrible, but it's also not great. Uh, let's see here. Which few fights do you think are overs or goes the distance? So I think the uh, the, the McKenna Amarim fight goes over or goes the distance. That's what I'm you know somewhat confident in. Uh, the Chazon fight probably does as well. I think the battle fight can can go, can go over, but I also could see battle getting like a late finish. Um, I think maybe the Chad and Hellinger Gregorio fight can maybe go over as well. Other than that, I think we're getting a lot of violence. I guess the Nunez Chandler fight could go over, but that would not be one I would touch. So, yeah. All right. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do a quick recap of the bets. Let me put in my final two bets here. So for Brian, I'm going with Brian battle battle sub two, three on FanDuel at plus seven fifty. Then I'm taking Tui Vasa plus the under one and a half uh, at plus one. Was it 190 or 195? Plus 195. All right. So let me double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. There it is. And we're going to now do a quick recap and then I'll get my best bet for the entire card. All right. Let me change screens here. There we go. All right. Um, appreciate you for hanging out, Jason. Always means a lot. No problem, Scarface. All right. So quick recap. Uh, 13 fights. I get three passes. My first pass is on the Gregorio fight, taking the Moises under two and a half rounds, minus 155. The McKenna fight goes the distance, minus 155. The Kulabau fight doesn't go, plus 125. Taking the Filio sub, 2-3 combo, plus 480. Mike Davis inside the distance, plus 150. GM3 inside the distance, plus 104. Chase on sub decision minus 160 passing on the Dalgarian fight. Um, I'm taking the uh, Kennedy round two plus 380 battle sub two three plus 750 and then the Tui Vasa plus the under one and a half at plus 195. Um, did I get my three passes? Passing on the Gregorio fight, passing on the Dalgarian fight, and I also. Passed on the Nunez fight, so I, I didn't put that in there. The Nunez fight. Did I put that in there? No, I didn't. Okay. Oh gosh, this is why it's hard to it's hard to host and uh, and perform on the show. All, all it's all it's all it's a lot. So passing on Nunez fight. Okay, I think I got everything. All right. 
Let's see. Um, I'd like to do it quick. I like to do it quick. That's just that's just my style. All right. So everything looks to be correct, which is good. So my best bet for the entire card, which if you guys are new, which you guys a lot of you guys probably aren't new, but if you hit your best bet, the profit's going to double. So looking for something plus money. It's between two for me. It's between the battle sub two, sub three at plus seven fifty, or the Jafel Filio sub two three at plus four eighty. Um, I'll go with the Filio. I'll go with the Filio plus four eighty, and that's going to be to win um nine point six. 9.6. So give me the Filio sub 2-3 as my best bet. We'll see if we can hit it. Maybe I should have went with the... No, I'll, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. How are we feeling about Gerald Mearshart? I mean, I think he should win. I think he should win. To Boston, yeah. Plus 195. Yeah, I agree. It's on It's on Bet Rivers as, as we speak. I think that's how he wins. I like to do it quick. That's what she said. There you go. Shout out to Rem Dog. Money line on two Ivasa. Um, I would just do yeah. I think the under one and a half and that two Ivasa is, is a good way to play it instead. But appreciate you, Joey Bag. All right, guys, I'm going to head out. Best of luck for this card. I'm like I'm liking this card. I'm hoping everything goes well for this card because next week is a uh, the total disaster. Next week, just a total disaster. I, I see people crapping on this card, and it's funny because. <laughs> If you don't like this card, you're going to hate next week's card. So enjoy, guys. Best of luck. Leave a like on your way out. Subscribe to the channel. I'll be back tomorrow on Pub Sports Radio with Uncle Wheezy breaking down UFC Vegas 89. I think it is next week. And then also uh, I'll be posting content, regular schedule as well. So, you guys, best of luck. Enjoy the fights. And we'll talk to you soon. See you later.